So what we're going to do now is just to go through some of the relevant unit concepts, models and theories that, that um, should be at least considered for your assessment. So you may choose to use all of these. You may choose to focus on, on, on a selection of them. Uh, you may choose to bring in additional ones uh, from other areas, and, and that's absolutely fine. This is not intended to be an exhaustive list. Uh, you do need to apply a bit of critical thinking and, and common sense. Uh, and if you think that you know there's another concept or theory that we covered um, that is is really useful to your recommendation, then absolutely you can include it. Uh, if uh, alternatively there's there's something from outside the unit uh, another model or theory you've read about in the textbook or, or another kind of academic source uh, then absolutely bring that in as well uh, this is a a good checklist to start with but it, it isn't the the be all and end all so if you want to add additional things uh, that's absolutely fine However, I do think that you should at least consider all of these um, that we're going to cover and look to see if it is going to be useful to you. Uh, so firstly, what we would want to do uh, is first consider what the current international strategy or the current global operations of your company or organization are. So before you start recommending new markets to enter, before you start recommending new entry modes to use, uh, you need to establish the context of your company or organization. So how are they con currently working uh, across the world, uh, how they're currently structured, what their current international strategy is, uh, and how they're affected by, by different processes of globalization. So the two major uh, uh, frameworks that we can use here are internationalization strategies. So you'll find lecture slides, and we covered this in, in quite a bit of detail as well for assessment one. Uh, so that's um, global strategy transnational strategy and multi-domestic strategy uh, to establish the context of how your organization is currently working. Uh, you can pull in other generic strategies or porter strategies and so on alongside this uh, if you if you want as well. Uh, and also uh, going back to week one, but the processes of globalization. So so which processes perhaps your organization depends on and, and which perhaps it's, it's, it's affected by more than, than, than others, let's say, uh, gives again necessary background context and uh, necessary detail uh, for your recommendation to to really make sense. So you can bring in those two areas again. There's there's lecture slides uh, we covered it in uh, during the unit already, uh, and there should be videos for a lot of these uh, concepts, models, and theories as well, uh, coupled with you know relevant parts of the textbook uh, or, or actually both of the key textbooks on the uh, on the reading list uh, that should give you quite a bit to 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 work from. Uh, so once we have that, in terms of actually. Uh, looking and choosing the new national markets or the country selection itself uh, as well as the entry modes uh, we did cover this over so there's two separate lecture slides again we covered this i think in in uh, week five i believe but you'll find all of that on the brio show and they are fairly large sections of the textbook dedicated to this also uh, so I, I would recommend so there's three major models you can use when uh, discussing country selection uh, firstly is Uppsala. Uh, or you can use uh, OLI, so the OLI matrix, uh, or indeed you can use scanning. I'd imagine for a lot of uh, a lot of students, scanning is going to be the big one. Excuse me. And if so, you will find again lecture slides and so on uh, on this. Uh, so that you don't want to use all three because they aren't complementary. They are alternative ways of identifying new markets. Uh, so you'll want to use one of them as opposed to all three of them, uh, but choose one that makes sense. So if your company has been using Uppsala for the last, you know, 20 years, you probably want to continue with Uppsala. Uh, you can either then use, uh, alternatively, you can use OLI, uh, or you can indeed use scanning. So choose one that makes sense for your organization. Uh, similarly, when it comes to entry modes, uh, you can take a, a, a closer look at the entry modes lecture, uh, but you want to base your discussion on entry modes uh, with not just the selection of the mode itself, uh, but also the, the spectrum of risk versus control. So each of the entry modes uh, has its own balance of risk and control, and that's something you will want to reflect in your work. Uh, it is worth stating 
that um, when you're discussing entry mode, so with country selection, you're obviously going to bring in quite a bit of macro environmental factors, particularly with scanning. So you'll be talking about political factors, economic factors, social factors. Uh, but with entry modes, you do want to bring in consideration of micro environmental factors as well. So this is often overlooked. So with entry modes, you do want to discuss supplier power, customer bargaining power, the competitive rivalry. Um, these are all things which would be natural and it would strengthen your discussion and your assessment to discuss uh, in your section on entry modes. So in terms of the other areas and concepts and theories that you are, are, are I would recommend everyone to use. So one would be, as we, we just spoke about, uh, looking at micro, um, sorry, macro environmental trends. Uh, so the three major areas I recommend everyone to consider would be political systems and political risks. Uh, so uh, if you're particularly uh, your recommendation and your, your national market particularly hinges on uh, perhaps is increased systemic risk, perhaps is catastrophic risk, uh, perhaps is redistributive risk, uh, then you will want to have a large section discussing those political risks and discussing the the distance between the political systems involved of, of your home country and obviously the, the proposed uh, new national market that you're recommending. Uh, even if there are minimal uh, political risks involved perhaps you know you're a french company recommending entry to i don't know italy uh, and, and there isn't a huge amount of political risk you'll still want to mention it highlight it along with some good citations and high quality academic references demonstrate your understanding of how important political systems and political risks are to international businesses uh, and then come to the conclusion, you know, that there are no significant political risks um, or at least no major political risks standing in the way of, of, of your particular recommendation. Um, similarly, with legal systems, you can not only talk about the distance between legal systems, but also perhaps there is um, issues of rule of man versus rule of law uh, between your, your two companies. So that may be something to highlight and discuss as well. Uh, if your company deals in things like intellectual property or, or perhaps in an industry where legal, legal systems are particularly important, so anything to do with intellectual property really does depend on the legal system to properly enforce and protect intellectual property, um, then that may be a larger section than it otherwise would be. So again, think about how important legal systems are to your recommendation and then adjust your, your, your planning accordingly. Uh, and then lastly, cultural factors and cultural distance. Now, I think everyone should at least consider this and have a discussion on it. Uh, but depending on your company and the industry your company is in, it may be uh, actually the, the most important part of your recommendation, your justification for your recommendation, or it could be relatively small. Uh, so if you're dealing with an industry that heavily depends on, 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 on culture, so Food, anything relating to food, anything relating to clothing, for example, uh, these are cultural products uh, and the cultural distance between the different markets will really impact on, on how much adaption and localization is needed. Um, then that's going to be a really big part of your of your report and it's going to be a big part of your discussion. Um, this may not be the case for everything, uh, but I think everyone needs to at least consider the cultural, different, uh, cultural distance between their home markets and their proposed markets for entry. Um, Right, so moving on to more practical matters, so operational and trade factors. Now, this is where you are going to have to consider the practicalities of actually operating in your in your proposed new national market. Uh, so you'll want to consider things like supply chain considerations. Uh, so your organization uh, presumably is already operating internationally, so it already has some uh, kind of international supply chain. So how is that going to be extended? You want to demonstrate your understanding and your knowledge of, of this, uh, of, you know, supply chain management uh, and then have a, a practical discussion on how that would be extended. Uh, you'd also want to have at least some uh, section uh, or a section of, of some length, variable length, looking at trade barriers and regional integration as well. Uh, so 
even if let's say your home market for your company is within the EU and you're proposing entering into another EU market so there are no trade barriers and there's significant regional integration in terms of legislation not legislation necessarily but regulation and so on um, then you still need a short section when I mean, again with some good academic references where you acknowledge and you state that they are minimal trade barriers uh, standing in the way of, of your recommendation so that that would be a good strong recommendation to make uh, but it does still need to be acknowledged uh, if there are trade barriers uh, and uh, you know you're you're recommending a new market to enter where there isn't an economic union or a customs union um, then you are going to have to uh, identify what those trade barriers are and have a good discussion about uh, you know how those trade barriers are not necessarily uh, going to be insurmountable this should be tied into your micro environmental factors as well uh, so if the largest competitors uh, in your proposed new market are in fact domestic companies um, then they won't be facing those trade barriers won't be facing those barriers to entry uh, so that does change the competitive rivalry and the competitive balance within your proposed new market um, if you're two markets your home market and your proposed new market to enter are both within say the eu uh, then again a short section on currency considerations i.e there's no significant currency considerations because your your proposed new market to enter is using the same currency that your home market is then it'd be a very short section uh, but for everyone else you will have to uh, have a section discussing forex so you want to bring in those uh, those academic concepts and models so you will want to perhaps have a discussion about the relationship between the two currencies whether there is a history of of, of significant fluctuation or whether it's relatively stable you will want to consider different uh, uh, currency exchange risks so translation and so on and transaction risks and how those can be tackled as well uh, and then lastly but not least you do want to have a, a discussion of ethical possible ethical considerations so i think everyone uh, can can devote uh, not necessarily a big section but a section to ethical considerations so um, there's lots of academic material to draw upon for this so for a, a lot of recommendations i'd imagine procedural risk and corruption is going to be a large part of this uh, so examining uh, the the proposed new market to enter and the degree of corruption that exists within that new market um, or indeed looking at, uh, at, at different ethical models, uh, whether it's CSR, corporate social responsibility uh, and so on, uh, and examining how significant those potential ethical issues are.